President Xi had a lot of ground to cover during his two days in Osaka. With the goal of better international relations and the vision of a shared future, Xi's efforts at the G20 summit focused on promoting multilateralism, mutually beneficial partnerships and joint development. He sought to push forward cooperation and increase confidence in global peace and development. Earlier, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi spoke about his achievements there, saying the president was looking to promote healthy diplomatic relations and to highlight the way forward for Chinese development. Wang said China has now a major role to play as one of the world's largest economies. President Xi gave solutions on relations among superpowers, international cooperation and how the G20 can best play its role. We can say China's vision is the most systematic, comprehensive and insightful. We felt the G20 countries and international community have given us warm responses. China is playing its role as a big country in global governance, especially the positive power and predictions we are offering. During the G20 meetings, she urged for more efforts in promoting global governance and in safeguarding the international system, with the United Nations at its core and international law as its foundation. He asked to preserve the multilateral trade regime with the World Trade Organization, promote the democratization of global relations and build an open world economy. Wang said with joint efforts, the G20 summit in Osaka vice support for multilateralism. He said it proves that upholding and practicing multilateralism is not just China's advocacy, but a consensus and goal of many of the world's countries. President Xi also attended a summit between Chinese and African officials, calling for efforts to boost synergy with the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. He noted that the Belt and Road Initiative, with its focus on development, could make substantial contributions to the UN's 2030 Agenda, as well as that of developing countries. One highlight of the G20 summit was Xi's meeting with US President Donald Trump, amid trade tensions between China and the United States. Wang said there was still reason to believe stable and long-lasting relations could be forged. The Chinese Foreign Minister also gave a positive note on relations with neighbouring Japan. President Xi had received a warm welcome in Osaka by Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Both sides reached a consensus on 10 points over bilateral relations. The 10 consensus adhered to the traditional good relations between the two countries and give direction for the future. Especially, Japanese society is really looking forward to President Xi's visit, which is expected next spring. At the G20 summit, President Xi spoke about market openness, calling on major economies to join hands in promoting free trade. His speech was met with appreciation from scholars around the globe. He put forward a four-point proposal in his speech, which are to explore driving forces for growth, improve global governance, remove development bottlenecks and properly address differences. Wang said these proposals help give direction to tackling challenges in the world economy. As a result, they would lead to the creation of greater spaces for global development and a better environment for international cooperation. Xi also discussed last April's Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation in Beijing, where a broad consensus was reached to produce fruitful outcomes on high-quality development. She called for adhering to the principles of extensive consultation, joint contribution and shared benefits, adopting open, green and clean approaches and striving to meet the goals of high standards, livelihood improvement and sustainability. President Xi also invited all interested parties to participate in the Belt and Road Initiative and to work together to make the pie bigger for mutual benefits. Xi's visit had a positive impact on the international community's understanding of China he touched on China's economic development, stressing its faith in peaceful coexistence and win-win cooperation with the rest of the world. His remarks received wide appreciation. China is considered an important power in the world economy and an important promoter of international free trade. Wang further expounded on some of Xi's comments, most notably on the important role of high-quality infrastructure construction, the digital economy and climate and energy. Overall, he called Xi's visit to Japan a success in boosting bilateral and multilateral relations. African businesses eyeing the lucrative Chinese market. Now with a new platform to help them open the door.
not just to showcase the very best from their home countries, but also to make deals. Participants welcome the outcomes from the first China-Africa Economic and Trade Expo. Our objective of coming to this, this expo was to expose new products to the China markets. And uh, these new products have been received well. We've actually gotten expressions of interest from prospective uh, partners, which interest we want to follow up. So in general, I can say we've achieved our objective and it's been a good expo. Another highlight from the expo, e-commerce as an increasingly crucial means to boost trade between China and Africa. Keely is a Chinese e-commerce company focused on simplifying China-Africa business. Its CEO says the expo has saved him time and costs of flying to different countries and factories across Africa to source suppliers. In Africa, we have a lot of good, pro good stuff, good products, and they are exporting to Europe, US, uh, many years. But China don't know, uh, Chinese consumers don't know about it. Uh, so we need to tell the true story. We need to tell about the background. And uh, we also need some custom documents. We need to more open this to the African countries. Higher level talks were also held to increase financial cooperation between China and African countries, with sustainable development as a key theme. Africa's infrastructure financing needs are huge, but I believe the construction process is a gradual one. We should tackle not just funding issues first, but also the planning part of it. According to the industry, nation's population and employment state, we will first plan our funding with each African government. Meanwhile, African banks commend their partnership with China Development Bank, one of China's policy banks. BCI, one of the largest banks in Mozambique, is one of them. Uh, less than 20% of people in Mozambique have bank accounts. So now the biggest constraint is that how to get to all the people uh, through the banking system. With the support of CDB, trying to get to the rural areas to uh, help them to increase their activity. Traditionally, China-Africa cooperation has largely been between the various central governments and state-owned enterprises. With this expo, businesses are able to deal directly with each other and their potential customers. It's been dubbed El Infierno, that's hell in Spanish. As hot air from Africa travels north, Spain is sweltering under suffocating temperatures. In some parts of the country, they are expected to reach 45 degrees Celsius. Even nighttime will bring little relief. Spain's state weather agency is warning of so-called tropical nights. The most annoying thing is not being able to rest. Nights when you can't sleep well, you wake up and you feel hot. And for the oldest people, and for people who are sick, it's even more difficult. Heat waves have become more common in Spain in recent years, and the Spanish have been adopting to the extreme temperatures. Staying home and taking a siesta is among the government's official guidelines to cope with the heat wave. Tourists visiting Spain are braving the heat with water, yet experts warn if they're not used to extreme heat, they can be very vulnerable. It's almost 5 p.m. and the temperature is 39 degrees Celsius. That's over 100 Fahrenheit. And it will rise further as temperatures here in Madrid don't peak until early evening. Most of Spain's 50 provinces are on alert, with a level in Madrid elevated to orange, one level below red. In 2003, tens of thousands died across Europe, including in Spain, during a record-breaking heat wave. Extreme heat is most dangerous for those with illnesses and without access to adequate cooling. According to experts, the lethal effects of a heat wave come on suddenly and escalate quickly. But a heat wave can also claim lives days after it's over. It has a delay of one, two or three days. That means that if temperatures increase today, the rates of mortality will start increasing the day after, two days after, and three days after. So if a heat wave lasts for three or four days, you will have an accumulated impact and increase of mortality for three or four days after it's gone. Meanwhile, hundreds of firefighters are battling a massive wildfire in Spain's Catalonia region. 
Officials believe the fire started when farm manure self-ignited due to the extreme heat. It's one of the worst in Catalonia in 20 years. Heat waves, experts warn, are becoming more frequent, intense, and long-lasting due to climate change, and Europeans must find ways to adopt. 